Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Snook with section 5.2, Bisectors in Triangles. And we're going to talk about two kinds of bisectors in triangles. The first one is the perpendicular bisector. And the second one is an angle bisector. So first off, we have the perpendicular bisector theorem. And what it says is if you have a triangle, and I'm going to highlight the base of that triangle right there, do you notice how we've got these two sides marked the same and we have a perpendicular marking? That means that line CD is perpendicular to line segment AB. And at the same time, AD is congruent to db so that's a perpendicular bisector it's both perpendicular and it bisects when that happens in a triangle then any point on this bisector is going to have the same distance from a to b so ac is going to be congruent to cb and this is true no matter where that is on the bisector, so those would be congruent. If I had a point up here, those would be congruent. So as long as you're going to the end points, A and B, and any point on that perpendicular bisector, then those are little triangles that we're making are going to be isosceles triangles, and those legs that we put in are going to be congruent. So that's your perpendicular bisector theorem. The next one is the converse. So converse means we're going the other way. So we're not going to start off knowing that CD is a perpendicular bisector. All we're going to know is that those two are congruent. So then triangle ABC is isosceles. If you bisect perpendicularly, sorry, we're going to um, be able to conclude just from this that CD is bisecting perpendicularly. So there's two things we can conclude. We can say that line CD is perpendicular to line AB. And we can also conclude that these two down here at the base, that those have been bisected. So we're going to say AD is congruent to DB. So it's the same thing as before, but we're going the other way. Now we're going to um, do some algebra with this. So we're going to find the value of x. We're doing number one. And I have marked up here a perpendicular bisector. That means right away I can say those two legs are congruent. So that lets me write this equation. And it's very important that you write the equation. I want to see your equations written. So there's the equation, and now the geometry is finished, and all we're going to do is use our algebra skills. I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. That leaves 6x over here, and at the same time, I'll add 48 to both sides. So that gives me 72 over here. And then divide both sides by 6, 12 equals x. Okay, now this one, number two, this is using the converse because I'm starting off knowing that those two are congruent. When those two are congruent, then right away I know that's a 90 degree angle and these two are congruent. So again, just set them equal to each other. 17x minus 3 equals 9x plus 13. That's the geometry. Now I'm just doing algebra. I'm going to add the 3 to both sides. So that gives me a 16 over here. At the same time, I'll subtract 9x. So then that gives me an 8x over here. And then just divide both sides by 8x equals 2. And that's done. Okay, now we're going to go one step further. Instead of just finding what x is, we're going to find the length of rs. 
So this is what I'm looking for, that length that I highlighted. Again, I have a perpendicular bisector, so I'm allowed right away to set these two lengths equal to each other. So 7x minus 22 equals 4x plus 5. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. That gives me 3x. At the same time, add 22 to both sides. I get 27. x equals 3. Don't stop there. Now you need to plug in. So plug in for rs. rs equals 4x plus 5. Plug in your 3. So I get 4 times 3 plus 5. That's 12 plus 5. That equals 17. So there's our final answer there. All right, EG, same idea, but we've got the converse. These two are congruent, so therefore I can mark that perpendicular and those two congruent. And it says to find the length of EG. So I'm looking for this. And what I'm going to do is set those two equal to each other. So 2x plus 11 is going to equal 14x minus 37. That's my equation, that's the geometry. Now I'm just doing algebra. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That leaves a 12x over here. At the same time, I'll add the 37, so I get a 48. Divide both sides by 12, x is going to equal 4. Now plug that into EG. So EG is 2x plus 11. So that's going to be 2 times 4 plus 11. 8 plus 4 is 19. Okay, let's go on to the next kind of bisector. This is the angle bisector. So notice that we have an angle. I'm going to highlight that in yellow. Here's the angle, angle ABC. And then we're going to bisect that angle with ray AB. So here's our bisector. That one's the bisector in the blue. When that happens, if I put in two segments, I'm going to pick anywhere on um, ray AD. So we just picked right here. I'm in perpendicular. Then that length is going to be the same as if I go perpendicular to the other side. Always perpendicular. And when that happens, we have line segment BD is congruent to line segment CD. Same thing works if we go backwards. So this time we're going to say these two are congruent and they're perpendicular. So right here that means that they're congruent. AB is perpendicular to BD, so that's the first one. The second one, AC, perpendicular to CD, so both of them congruent and perpendicular. You can then conclude that this ray, AD, is an angle bisector. In other words, I can mark those two angles congruent, and I can say angle BAD is the same as angle CAD. So we'll do some example problems like this. We are going to find the value of x. I'm told that I have an angle bisector, and right here is the perpendicular, so that I can say right away 4x plus 3 is going to equal 9x minus 5. Okay, that's the geometry. Now I'm just going to go through the algebra quickly. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. So I'm left with, over here, I have 5x. Same time, add the 5. So I get, oh, that's not a 3, that's a 30. Add the 5, I get a 35. So then divide both sides by 5, x equals 7, and that's done.
All right, over here, we're doing the converse. Okay. I know that these are perpendicular. I know they're congruent. That lets me conclude that my angles up here are the same. So I'm going to say 5x minus 11 equals 8x minus 41. That's the geometry. Written the equation. Now I'm going to solve it. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. That leaves 3x. At the same time, add the uh, 41 to both sides, and I get 52. I'm going to take um, 52 and uh, no, no, nope, nope. It's 30. Sorry, gang. So you have a negative 11 over here. And then we're going to add the 41 that was over there. That gives me a 30. And then divide both sides by 3x equals 10. OK, now we're going to go a step further with these examples. Instead of just finding x, I'm going to find AD. So what I'm looking for is this length right here. And what I'm told is that I have a bisector and I'm perpendicular. Therefore, those two equal each other. So set them equal. 13x minus 4 equals 8x plus 11. That's the geometry. Okay, if you can do this, then you can solve this problem. I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. That gives me a 5x. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. That gives me 15. x equals 3 because I just divide both sides by 5. Now plug in to get AD. AD equals 13x minus 4. So that equals 13 times 3 minus 4. Punch that into your calculator and you're going to get 35. Okay, we've done it one way uh, where we find the side. Now we're going to find an angle. We're looking for angle XWZ. So let's find that one. XWZ. So this angle here that I highlighted in red, that's what I'm looking for. Whoops, didn't do that right. wanted to highlight it. So uh, we're going to end up plugging into that 8x minus 32. All right, so let's write our equation. I know that I have perpendicular. I know that they're equal. That means that I have a bisector up here. So 8x minus 32 is going to equal 3x plus 3. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, so I get 5x over here. At the same time, add your 32, so you get 35. x equals 7. Now we're going to plug that in. Angle XWZ equals 8x minus 32. So that's 8 times 7 minus 32. Angle XWZ is going to equal, well, 56 minus 32 is 24. All right, um, that's it for today's lesson. Thank you for watching, and have yourself a great day.